A circular helix in xyz space has the following parametric equations, where theta is a real number. Okay, and so we're given um, the coordinates of x, y, and z in terms of theta, pretty much what you would expect for this helix. Let L theta be the arc length of the helix from the point uh, P theta to the point 5, 0, 0. And let D theta be the distance between P, zero, uh, P theta and the origin. If L theta naught equals 26, then D of theta naught is equal to one of these options. Okay, so um, the point five zero zero obviously corresponds to theta equals zero, which is kind of convenient. So I think all we really need to do here is write out what the formulas are for L theta and D theta solve for when L theta is equal to 26, and then use that to compute D theta. Um, I don't know if there is a nice convenient expression for the arc length of a helix, so I might just derive it. I hope it's easy to derive. So P of theta is equal to, well, hold on. Uh, let's write out the, I'll just write out the individual coordinates, which are already given. X of theta is equal to 5 cosine theta. Y of theta is equal to 5 sine theta. And Z theta is equal to theta. Okay, so the arc length for a parametric curve, this is going to be the integral from 0 to theta of... Um, x prime t squared plus y prime t squared plus z prime t squared all square root dt. Right? If I think of think of theta or think of t as time then this is the square is this under the square root this this whole thing being square rooted well including the square root that is the speed of the particle speed of the particle speed integrated across time gives distance right okay so let's just compute this um, again there might be maybe some maybe some people have memorized the formula of arc length of uh, a circular helix I don't Zero to theta, okay. So x prime squared is 25 sine squared t plus 25 cos squared t plus 1. Okay, under a square root dt. So this gives the integral from 0 to theta of 26 under a square root dt. So L of theta is equal to root 26 theta. I mean, I guess it makes perfect sense that the, uh, the arc length is linear with respect to theta. Um, it's traveling at a constant speed, so, yeah. Okay, um, so we need, so we have, we're given that L of theta naught is equal to 26. So this implies, of course, theta naught is equal to root 26. But now we need to compute also D of theta. D of theta is just the distance between the point and the origin, so that's equal to x theta squared plus z theta squared plus theta squared square root, which is um, 25 
O squared theta plus 25 sine squared theta plus theta squared under root. So we have here 25 plus theta squared. Okay. And so then D of theta naught is 25 plus theta naught is root 26. So 25 plus 26 under square root, which is 51. And that's option B. So the fact that we went through this step by step and ended up with one of the options given means either I've fallen exactly into the trap that they've set and don't know what it is. I hope that's not the case or that this is the correct answer. Um, I'm pretty confident in this. You know, I basically just did everything from like first principles. It was a nice sanity check that of course the distance, the arc length that this thing travels is uh, linear with respect to theta. Um, I guess if I thought about it a little bit longer, the intuition that it's root 26 would make sense. I can kind of see a little bit where that's coming from, but um, I don't really want to focus too much on, on trying to gain some intuition for the root 26. Uh, and I've just, you know, gone through the computations and done exactly what was asked for, right? I solved for theta naught, pretty straightforward and uh, end up with, with this. So yeah, pretty good question. Um, if I find a mistake somewhere, then I'll make sure to highlight it in the video or write it down in the description. Thanks for watching.